Okay, so in this video, we will consider a second example of integration by parts and finding now a definite integral, that is the integral of from 1 to 3 of ln of x all squared dx. And now you can, if you want, when you do integration by parts, carry the bounds of integration in the integration by parts. So if I had, let's say, from 1 to 3, this would still be from 1 to 3, and I would evaluate this from 1 to 3. So it would be uv at 3 minus uv at 1. But when you carry the bounds of integration in by parts, and if you use by parts several times, this can get quite messy. So the idea is whenever you have a definite integral, and you think you're going to need to use by parts once, or even you know once, twice, or, or more than, than that, but even once, you're better off first applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, thinking that to find a definite integral, all you need first is to find an antiderivative of the function. And once you have the antiderivative, then it's just a matter of evaluating it at 1 and 3 and subtracting. So what we'll do first is we'll find the indefinite integral using by parts. And once we have this indefinite integral, then we'll evaluate. And this will make for a slightly cleaner, lighter solution than carrying the bounds of integration everywhere in integration by parts. So let's see what we have here. So we have the integral of the ln of x all squared dx. Well, what is our u? The whole thing must be u dv. There's not much of a choice for u. I mean, you could break down ln of x squared as ln of x, ln of x. But if you let u be simply ln of x, everything else will be dv, which will be ln of x dx. And then it's not so easy to integrate. So you're better off taking everything to be your u, ln of x all squared. And of course, the whole integral must be the integral of u dv. So everything else, dx, must be your dv. As always, we're missing now our du and our v. So let's find our du by differentiating u with respect to x. So du with respect to x equals, well here we have a composition, we take the ln and then we square it. By the chain rule we differentiate the outside function, the power 2 function, so we bring 2 down and 2 minus 1 is 1, so we get 2 ln of x. Chain rule times the derivative of the inside and the derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. So we have 2 ln of x over x. What we want is not du over dx, but simply du. So multiply across by dx. And so du is 2 ln of x over x dx. So now we have our du. The only missing part is our v. Of course, to find v, we integrate dv. But dv is just dx. And if you integrate dx, of course, you get simply x. And remember, in integration by parts, once we find our v from integrating our dv, we do not add the constant of integration. So all we have is v is x. So this is our first application of integration by parts. Let's see what comes out. So the integral of u dv is u times v, so u ln of x all squared, times v, which is x, minus the integral of v, which is x, du, which is 2 ln of x over x dx. And I'm putting a 1 there, and you'll see in one second, why am I doing this? So let's simplify our new integral. So I'll write x first, as it is simpler than ln of x all squared. So we have x, the ln of x all squared, minus. 
Well, the x over x cancels. The negative 2 is a constant multiple. We can pull it out. And that leaves us with the integral of ln of x dx. So first question, is this a trivial integral? The answer is no. But is it easier than the original integral? And the answer is yes. Before we had the ln of x all squared, another square has disappeared. And so it looks like the integral of ln of x should be simpler than ln of x all squared. So we have made progress. But this is still not the trivial integral. And you can probably guess now why I've put a 1 to integrate ln of x dx, we have to use once again by parts. Now, personally, I can only remember by parts if I use u and v. And since we went from this integral, which is a function of x, to this integral, which is also a function of x, we can use u and v again. So I've boxed up my first application of by parts. And because we went from a function of x to a function of x, we can ignore our first choice of u and dv and just repeat by parts using again u and dv. You can use different variables if you want, but for myself, if I use other variables than u and v, I'll get confused. So I'm forgetting this choice of u and dv, I'm forgetting all this, and I'm doing a second by parts. So here, this is our u, everything else is our dv. As always, to find du, we differentiate. So du over dx is quite simply 1 over x. To solve for du, multiply by dx, and you get that du is 1 over x dx. To find our v, as always, we integrate dv. dv is simply dx. Any integral of dx is simply x. And so as in our previous application, v ends up being equal to x. And I'm keeping track, so this is my second application of integration by parts. So let's see what comes out now. So I'll just put my equal sign here. I need a bit more space. So I have my x ln of x all squared. Minus 2 times, and be careful to open your brackets here. Because 2 multiplies all of the integral of u dv. So your 2 must multiply all of u v minus the integral of v du. So be very careful about this. So the integral of u dv is u times v, so it's ln of x times x, which I'll rewrite as x times ln of x, minus the integral of v x du, 1 over x dx. And the great thing now is that as we simplify and integrate this, it will be the integral of dx, which is completely trivial. And that will be done our integration. And so you see, to integrate ln of x all squared required two applications of by parts. And there is no limit as to how many times you can apply by parts. You can apply by parts 100 times if you have to. But of course, we won't go there. I mean, once you do it twice, you've shown that you know how to apply it, then it just becomes very redundant. So let's simplify and let's see what we get. So we have x, the ln of x squared. If I distribute my negative 2 here, I'll get negative 2x ln of x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So positive 2 times the integral of well, x over x is 1, so the integral of dx. So finally, I get x, the ln of x squared, minus 2x, the ln of x. The integral of dx is x, so it's plus 2x. And again, I could do 2 times x plus c, then say 2 times c, but a c is an arbitrary constant, so it's 2c, and I'll just replace my 2c with a c. And now we're done. We have our antiderivative. And I will call this uppercase f of x because we are not done now. If you remember, the question was not just for the indefinite integral of ln of x all squared, but it was for the definite integral of ln of x all squared from 1 to 3. But now we have found 
or antiderivative using two applications of biparts. So this will simply be f of 3 minus f of 1. So let's evaluate this and to avoid rewriting this, or actually let me rewrite it just for completeness. So the integral from 1 to 3 of ln of x squared dx is by the fundamental theorem of calculus as we have just said our antiderivative at 3 minus our antiderivative at 1 so f of 3 minus f of 1 and that's just a question of plugging it in so we have 3 ln of 3 all squared minus 2 times 3 6 ln of 3 plus 2 times 3 is 6 so plus 6 so that is f of 3 minus of course f of 1 the great thing is that ln of 1 is 0 so this is 0 this is 0 and all we're left with is 2 times 1 2 so finally we get 3 ln of 3 squared minus 6 ln of 3 and of course 6 minus 2 is plus 4 and that's it so the integral of ln of x all squared dx from 1 to 3 is 3 ln of 3 squared minus 6 ln of 3 plus 4 and you see if we had not thought of well let's first find the antiderivative and then once we have it we'll evaluate if we had dragged these bounds of integration everywhere, it would have just made things confusing. Because then this would have been, okay, we integrate from 1 to 3. So this will be from 1 to 3. We integrate from 1 to 3. This is still from 1 to 3. This is from 1 to 3. Then we do by parts again. So we must still evaluate this from 1 to 3. This must be from 1 to 3. This is still from 1 to 3. <laughs> Evaluate from 1 to 3, 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 and then we evaluate. But you see, along the way, we never evaluate anything. We just keep writing, okay, this must be from 1 to 3, from 1 to 3, 1 to 3, 1 to 3, 1 to 3. So we write this over and over again but we never do anything with it until the very end when we're finally done with the integration and we're ready to evaluate and that's really the, the lesson I want to leave you with here whenever you have a definite integral and you think you'll need to use by parts in finding the antiderivative well forget the bounds find the antiderivative first so that you don't have to drag the bounds of integration over and over again in your application of biparts. So that takes a lot less writing and makes the solution look much clearer. And once you have the antiderivative, then simply evaluate at the endpoints and subtract. And hopefully I've convinced you that when you drag the bounds of integration in biparts, it's just a drag because you're writing these and all it does is clutter your solution because you don't evaluate until the very end when you're done with the integration. So that's it.